It's a beautiful day. Hey, 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 nice to see you, bedtime bunnies. Welcome to Storytime with Sid, live at 6.45. How are you? Have you had a good day? I certainly hope so. I hope you're feeling happy and not too sad. And if you're feeling sad, don't worry, things will definitely get better, hopefully by the end of this story time with me. So now we've got a story called The Singing Beetle. It's a short one, so I think I'm going to make it a double bill tonight. Now I've got another story called Bo the Bat, and I can't remember if I've read that one to you already. Hopefully not. I've got a feeling I might have done, but we've got this one first, The Singing Beetle, so you're going to get a different one, that is for sure. And Bo the Bat's good anyway, so you'll like that one too. So double bill. We better get ourselves ready by practicing our super super calm, super power, <laughs> and learning to defeat distraction. Yes, we're going to practice our superpowers of calm. We're going to become super, super type, superheroes of calm and build our superpowers. So how we do that is by shushing the room, sitting still, sitting quietly for 45 seconds. It's just a practice, so don't worry. If it doesn't feel as though you're getting it right, it's all about the practice, and that is the most important thing. So I've got 45 seconds on the clock. Let's shush the room, as I said. Go So everyone around can help you with your quietness, and then all you need to do is sit nice and still. So we'll relax our bodies, get rid of those twitches and itches, and that feeling of wanting to move. And it doesn't matter if you do have to move, because sometimes you know, sometimes you just feel like you've got to do something, you know? <laughs> but we're going to practice reducing that down to the minimum, okay? So take a big deep breath in. Let it out nice and slowly. And take another big deep breath in. Feels good. Let it out nice and slow. And relax. As you do, give a little sway, gently twist out and turn out your neck, put a smile on your face. Now, if you like, when we go for the quiet time, you can do it with your eyes closed, or you can just keep them open and stay still and watch the clock. But don't worry, if you close your eyes, I'll tell you when the time's up. So, now we're sitting still and quiet, hopefully with our favourite cuddly, snuggly. Um, let's start the clock. There we go. And you can open your eyes now, just in time to receive a lovely thumbs up from me. Because you're so cool and you're a superhero of calm. And you're learning to defeat distraction more and more. The longer you practice, the better you get. So keep on practicing because practice makes permanent. It certainly does. So are you ready for the story? Let's crack on with it, shall we? Or them, I should say. Because we're starting with the singing beetle. Then we have... Bo the bat. Oh, now let me put something on. I don't know, how about these super cool glasses? <laughs> we'll put those on. Yellow rimmed sunglasses or tinted glasses. I think you can just about see my eyes there as well. Um, we'll do this The Singing Beetle, written by Linda Strachan, illustrated by Oliver Hurst, published by Collins, Collins Books. And then we'll do Bo the bat. Poppy the beetle liked to sing. She sang all day. She sang if she was happy. She sang if she was sad. Squeak, squeal, screech. The rest of the Beatles didn't like Poppy singing. They said her singing was squeaky. No one wanted to play with Poppy. 
but Bobby was sad. She went off into the woods. Now I can sing as loudly as I want, she said. She sang so loudly that she didn't spot Harry the mouse. Harry was looking for a treat. Jake the snake was looking for a treat too. Yummy, a mouse, he said. But Poppy's singing was so loud that Harry didn't spot Jake. Jake looked at Harry. Harry looked at Poppy. Poppy looked at Jake. Look out, little mouse, Poppy cried. The sneaky snake wants you as a snack. Harry got a fright. A snake, he said. He ran to hide in a heap of leaves. He tried not to shake. Jake's tummy gave a rumble. He went to look for Harry. Look out, said brave little Poppy. Then Poppy began to sing. It was loud and squeaky. Jake got a fright and he slid away. Harry came out. You are a brave beetle, he said, and I like your singing. Really? said Poppy. Harry liked to sing too. We could sing together, he said. So Harry and Poppy sang together every day. Squeak, squeal, screech. <laughs> that was a nice little story, wasn't it? What a brave little beetle. Now let's get the next book up. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Mm, let's go to my library and we want Bo the Bat, which I suspect I may have read before. I'm hoping I haven't. It's written by Alma Hammond and illustrated by Zuzana Zvobod Zvobodova. Zuzana Zvobodova. Nice, good name. Bo the Bat wears a top hat, rides a bike and loves to chat. But when Bo comes near, children hide in fear. Bo only wants to have some fun and trick or treat like everyone. When Bo swoops down to catch a fly, all the children let out a cry. Poor Bo just wonders, why, oh, why? Then Bo comes up with a plan. I'll make them love me. I can. Hey, children, I know it's late, but I want to show you that bats are great. We are, in fact, amazing. So look up and start gazing. We can see by bouncing off we can see by bouncing sound off objects in our way. Now that's pretty cool, wouldn't you say? Just like bees, we spread pollen and seeds to grow the fruits and veggies that you need. Those bugs that make you itch and scratch, we can eat a great big batch. And we have wings so stylish and light, which keep our bat bodies warm at night. Bats do good things, don't you see? So next time you see us, Please don't flee. Bats do good things, don't you see? So next time you see us, please don't flee. Instead, consider the bat a friend, because we deserve respect in the end. We had no idea bats were so great, said a little girl of about eight. Thanks so much for setting us straight. My pleasure, said Bo with a smile. Now, may I trick or treat with you for a while? Of course you can, said the girl with delight, and maybe you can help us see through this dark night. And off they went. That was a cute little story. Have I read it before? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. I've just read it again, and I certainly hope you enjoyed it, Bedtime Bunnies. I hope you have a great night's sleep tonight. Let me take off my glasses so you can see my eyes. Where are we? Uh, there we go. That's better. <laughs> Hope you have a lovely sleep this evening. Of course, join me again for more story time with Sid live at 6.45. That's the time. Grown-ups, like and subscribe, please. And I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Sleep well. Lots of love. Good night.